I was told to come here today because Victor was supposed to be a speaker, but um, I just want to share with you guys a love story. And uh, that love story is so meaningful and impactful to my heart because uh, it's a love story that happened to me, right? And, uh, you know, ever since a young age, I, I wasn't a believer. I didn't know who the Lord was. I was raised in a family that uh, was filled with addiction and poverty and um, you know, my, my father was a heroin addict, my mother was a drug addict, and uh, needless to say, I, I, was, uh, I was that kid on the block that nobody wanted to hang out with. You know, I would get in trouble and with the law and in school, and man, I was just so lost. I was so hurt. I had so much resentment in my heart. You know, I didn't know what, what friendship was, I didn't know what love was, I didn't know what family was, and uh, man, I was just so broken. So broken, and I, I wandered through the years, broken, resentful. Uh, I fall, I fell into drug addiction, and uh, man, at the last of my uh, my addiction, man, I, I was on some hardcore substances, homeless, <coughs> running from the law, and uh, man, that's where Jesus met me. Right, right in that, right in that thick muck and miry, where every single buddy that would walk by me didn't care, where my family disowned me, and people would look at me and just say, this guy is a lost cause. But Christ looked at me and says, I love him. I love him. And uh, he met me right in that moment, right in that moment in the, in, in the, the, the depth of my addiction. He met me and he, he said, son, I love you. I love you and come home. Know what love is. Know what compassion is. Know what mercy is. Know what forgiveness is. And these are all things that I had no clue what they were because I was filled with hatred and anger and resentment and uh, sorrow and pity. And, 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 and I was so guilty. And uh, you know, I remember like it, was, like it was yesterday. I remember... So I'll tell you a quick little testimony. I, uh, I was in the last of my addiction, last couple days, and I, I manipulated this girl for some finances. And uh, I go to the store, I get the, the, it through Western Union, and I remember walking across the street, and you know, a, a person that's in addiction is holding on to that money because that's the lifeline, right? That's the lifeline to get you to where you want to be well. And uh, I remember walking down the street, and I remember seeing this guy, and uh, he, I, I remember he was in this beat up car and he was just glowing, so angelic. And, and I remember the worship song, and this is before I was a believer, I didn't even know who Christ was, right? And I watched this guy and he's so angelic and he's, and he's praising God and he's singing, there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, right? And he's singing, he's praising God. I am telling you, I was caught so off guard. I'm like looking at this guy like, you are nuts. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that guy's nuts, right? While I'm in my gray world, you know, I, I'm telling you, the only thing I seen in my addiction was dollar signs. <laughs> and uh, so I'm looking at this guy, I'm like, man, it's so weird. So I'm walking down the street, and mind you, it was only $10, so that was like my fix for the day. I walked down a little bit longer, and I, I looked in my pocket, and I'm like, what happened to the money? So like anybody else that's in addiction, I'm like looking under cars, looking under this, looking under that. And I'm like, what is going on, right? So I, I was forced at that time to go home and truly pray to, to God. And I prayed and I prayed and I was so hurting from, from the addiction and I prayed and I said, God, if you're, if you're out there, man, you, 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 have to, you have to see me. And I remember praying the uh, AA step, and it's uh, relieve me of the bondage of myself, because that's really what I was in. I was in such a thick bondage of my own insanity that I didn't even know. I was so blinded. I love the I, I love in the gospel about the healing of the blind man, because that was me. That was me. I was so lost. I didn't even realize it. You know, and I didn't, you know, and, and, and you guys were all sitting around praising God and, and praying for others, and I had no clue what was going on. And I was so lost, and I remember, you know, that night I prayed, and, and, and the following night I got into, uh, the following day I got into a Christian program, a lot of you guys know Chuck, and I stayed a year in that ministry, and 
I remember the second day, I came, well, the first day into the ministry, I came to Calvary Chapel, and I remember the message was on sin. And I was not a believer yet, right? And there's a whole huge list, you know, th those lists in scriptures, you know, you're a lover of self, you're, you're this, you're that, you're that, and I'm just like, man. I'm looking at the scripture, and I'm like, dude, this is me. This is me to the T, everything. God was just touching my heart in a special way and revealing who I really am. And uh, the following night, we went to a recovery meeting, and same thing, same thing, scripture, scripture, you're this, you're this, you're this, you know, you're a deceiver, lover of women and money, and I was just, man, I was so convicted, so convicted of just the, the sin that was in my life. And I finally, I, I believe God at that moment re removed the blinders, right, and allowed me to see really who I was as a person. I was filthy. You know, I thought that I was better than everybody. I was arrogant. I was prideful. I didn't think I had a problem. In fact, I was the last one to find out I had a problem. <laughs> you know, everybody else knew it, but I didn't. I'm like, hey, yeah, right. Um, and I, I remember this Friday night, and it wasn't this huge altar call. It wasn't Billy Graham, and you know, yeah, but it was a movie, and it was called Do You Believe? And it was just, man, the Holy Spirit was just ministering to my heart that whole day, and and I'm telling you, so like this movie just ministered to me in a way that was just, it wasn't the movie, it was the Holy Spirit, but yeah. praise the Lord, right? So I'm watching this movie and all these things are happening and this person, this doing this, this person doing that. And like all at the end, it like gets into this entwined, big, huge story that it's all God and he's sovereign over it all. And I remember, man, my heart just, and I'm sitting in, in, in the seat just like you guys, my heart just pumping, pumping, pumping. I remember, you know, and I, I, I'm, I'm a pretty tough guy, right? And um, I hadn't cried in, I would say, about 10 years. And I'm sitting in this seat, and I'm crying. And I'm crying, and I'm crying, and I'm just so broken in my heart. So broken in my heart. And the Lord just says, do it. Get up there. Get up there. And, I, you know, and, and they made a little altar call. I don't know if I was the only one or if there was thousands of people that came that day. But I know that I was in a room empty with Jesus looking at him. And I encountered the forgiveness of God like no other. And I remember that day and that day alone, I was forgiven. That I was, I was brought back to life. I was redeemed. I was purchased by his blood. And I know that that day is a day that nobody can take away from me. So God pursues me when I'm in my darkness, but here's where I pursue Him, right? And uh, man, so I'm in the I'm in in, in Shout Never Thirst, and I'm like still, you know, a little bit of the world. Uh, hey, I know Jesus is in my heart, I love Jesus, and uh, but I never read the Word, right? So in here I, I'm 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 reading, and Chuck goes, "Yo, get into the Gospel." So I'm like, "All right, I'm getting into the Gospel." I'll start at Matthew, and I start reading first thing, genealogy. <laughs> A joke, amen. <laughs> and no, but I continued to read, right? I continued to press forward. I continued to pray, and I was praying. And, and I remember, you know, in, in the early times of me coming to know who Christ was, man, I was just praying fully dependent on Him and none of myself, right? Lord, you show me these things. You show me what you want to have for me. You show me a, a word today. And, and, and through it all, I mean, maybe for the first three months, you didn't speak to me once. But I know for a fact that that, that fruit is in my life today. Right? And I continued to pursue him. I continued to pursue him. I continued to fall in love with him. And I remember I was, I was in the recovery house, and these guys are all, you know, coming off the street. And I'm, like, dancing for joy, telling them how much Jesus loves me. And, uh, man, I just, I felt like, like, I felt like I was on this honeymoon stage with God. And I just loved it. I felt hell, head over heels in love with Jesus and everything that he's done for me and just the, the miracles and just personally speaking to me in his word and, so I just continued to pursue him, right? and, and today I continue to pursue him, and, and September 23rd, 2015 was the day that I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, so it's come close to four years, mm -hmm. and uh, in that four years, I, I've, I've been delivered from, from any kind of addiction, you know, cigarettes, heroin, crack cocaine, alcohol, Xanax. about it today and I'm just like, man, I am like straight up, there's no struggle in me. 
I am dead. I no longer wrestle. You know, I am dead, and for me to live is Christ, and every single day, and, 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 and I pursue Him endlessly every single day. And so while I'm in the house, you know, the Lord continued to speak to me, and, and I got into school, and, and I'm telling you, I did not want to go to school. In fact, in eighth grade, I, I got scored on, like, one of them tests, and, like, I don't know, ASAMs or something. I had a third grade reading level in eighth grade. I tell, in high school, I just, I, you know, I cheated my whole way through it, you know? I'll tell, I was a sinner. There was no, there's no covering it up. And uh, man, I'm telling you, but I got into school and I started going to college. And, and actually, uh, a year and a half ago, I graduated with my associate's degree in behavior, health, and human services. Listen, I just want to you know, confirm that the praise is not of me. You know, the praise is all to, all to God. I mean, listen, I am totally nothing without Jesus in my life. Amen. And, uh, you know, so I just continued to pursue God, and I, I remember praying. I was about a year, maybe 11 months into the program. I go to Chuck. I go, hey, Chuck, man, what do you think of this girl, Amanda? Now, Amanda, she came through yeah, She came through the women's ministry. So she was in Shout Never Thirst before, you know, be, uh, you know, be, before the men's house, and she was pursuing God, and I remember hearing a lot about her, and you know, I'm a young guy, and I, you know, I'm praying. I'm like, Lord, you know, show me how I can, I, I can have it help me. You know, uh, I'm praying that that the Lord just puts, you know, a, a female companion in my life. And I talk to Chuck, and he goes, "Praise the Lord, go, go on a date." So we go to Dave and Buster's, and I tell you this one thing in particular. I remember our second date, and God just shows up, right? Our second date, we go out, and we're like, you know, I think I'm, I'm, I'm a nice. Nice guy. I'm like, oh, well, I'll take her to the river and we'll look at the river, the skyline. God had a different plan, right? So we're walking down Spring Garden, and I'm telling you, this guy is like in one of those like gully things where like, you know, the rocks and the, the sewer are at, right? And he's sitting there, and I'm like, yo, oh, and the Lord puts it on my heart. He goes, ask this guy what's going on. And uh, so I reach out and I say, yo, bro, is everything all right? He goes, you're going to feed me. I said, praise the Lord, I'm going to feed you. Right? And I'm with the, Right? So I'm with Amanda, and I'm like, yo, this, this girl thinks I'm a clown, probably. Because right? I never had a relationship with Christ, right? And uh, this man, he comes, and, and I'm telling you, this man is, is speaking the word of God. And he's a, he's a backslidden Christian, loves the Lord. And I'm telling you, this guy is more girded in the word than I am today, literally. And uh, man, he's just talking about the love of God, and we get to talk to him, we can minister to him, we got him something to eat. And uh, I remember I was like, well, I can't just leave him like this, right? So I said, you want to come back to, to, to the ministry, get a clean bed and a shower and all that stuff? So I called Chuck and the house manager up, he goes, yeah, praise the Lord, come in. So we set them all up nice and neat, and the next morning I wake up 7 o'clock thinking I'm like going to... Go talk to this man, and he's gone. Mm -hmm. And, uh, man, the Lord just showed me how we can entertain angels and not really even know that they are. And uh, just, you know, the presence of God in a relationship is so powerful. Right, so, you know, we, we continue to, you know, go on dates. We continue to, you know, pursue God together. We're getting into the Word. We're praying. And... Uh, you know, I, I took her hand, and you know, she took my hand, or however it goes in marriage. <laughs> Praise the Lord, right? And, uh, and, and we have a, a child that we just had, and, and, and we also, in the process of it all, <laughs> you know, something that's really meaningful to me is, uh, you know, my niece, Layla. So I, I have a sister, um, and she's incarcerated for a murder charge, and, you know, we had no, no guidance, you know, we fell into the streets. And uh, so she's doing a 12-year state bid right now, and she had a daughter. And I remember in the last of my addiction, see, I used to rip and run. Mark, do I need to clarify that? Or is that good? <laughs> you know, ripping and running to like in your addiction, running around, stealing, robbing, thieving, all that kind of stuff. So I say ripping and running. So I'm ripping and running on the streets, and I and and, I'm, and with my mom. So my mom's in active substance use with me, right? And so every day I would be the one to go get it and come back to the house. And we were trying to take care of this uh, three-month-old baby because my sister had gotten incarcerated. And I remember looking at this child and just the innocence. 
Right? I remember looking and I was like, man, I just got to change something. I got to do something. I, you know, I, I seen everything around me just falling and caving, and I look at this girl and I'm like, I just got to do something. And that, that was a lot of motivation as well, is the pursuing God and going into, into Shall Never Thirst. And as of last month, we fully adopted her out of the state's custody. You know, that was just been so amazing in my life, man, because God has truly worked the miracles that he has recorded in the Bible in my personal life. And he wants to do each, he wants to do it for each and every single one of us sitting in this room. If we just allow him, if we put our trust in him. You know, if you're saying, hey, Zach, you know, I don't know what's going on in my life. You know, God's not moving mountains like this. I, you know, I, I challenge you to, to really look at your relationship with Jesus. Is he just something that you, you, you call Lord, or is he really, truly your Lord? Right? That's, that's hard, but it's truth, guys, right? God wants to do exceedingly and abundantly things in your life. Today, tomorrow, the next day, for your family. The Word of God says that not only you, but your household will be saved, right? And, and, and I witnessed my mom coming to know who Christ is. She stands in, these, this, in, in the sanctuary with her hands lifted high. writes them in his word. Pursue him. Chase after him. You know, and tonight we're going to do communion and I don't know how long I have, but I'm probably going to wrap it up. But <laughs> I could be up here forever. I don't know how long. But uh, listen, if tonight, if you don't know him and you desire to know him, if tonight maybe you're falling short and you're like, Zach, I don't know what's really going on in my life. I don't see these miracles. I don't see these deliverances. And I pray and I pray. I, I challenge you to come, come up here tonight. Receive prayer. I challenge your heart today to, to receive Christ if you don't know who Christ is. Listen, He loves you. He cares for you. He's slow to anger and filled with unfailing love. Repent. Turn away from it. So I want to open it up tonight. Is there anybody here tonight that either doesn't know who Christ is or wants to recommit their life? Maybe going through a time, time, a time of challenge, a time, a time of worry, maybe, maybe just relapse, or, or your family's arguing, something's going chaotic. I challenge you to come up here. Receive prayer. Amen. Amen. Uh,